This is baby Hank. And now we're going to turn our attention to the baby half of the fourth trimester dyad. So typically, moms, dads join me at the table. I'm seated like this. Baby can be propped up in a boppy. They can be on a blanket table, whatever makes them comfortable. But do be prepared that occasionally they spit up or something more exciting comes out of their diaper. So you want to have a, an area that's amenable to clean up. Hi. And so when I start, especially with a new child and a new family, I spend the first few minutes letting them get to know me and I them. But while that's happening and while I'm getting that baby love and talking to the family, explaining um, questions, answering questions, I'm absolutely inspecting the baby. So my kind of what would be the standing postural exam in an adult or your AGR screen in an adult, I'm doing a supine postural assessment of the baby while we're talking and cooing with one another. And you can see that Hank, is fairly unrestricted. He is about two and a half months old. He's laying nice and supine on the table in the midline. He's showing us nice movement of all four extremities, whereas some babies lie down and they're pulled in one direction, pulled in the other, or their bottom half goes one way and their top half goes another. Um, another great way to assess that is by assisting the baby into a tummy time. So you need to either lift the arm all the way up or keep it at their side and help guide them over into a tummy time. But some kiddos, once you put them in tummy time, well done, Hank, will show you that pattern of restriction where they pull in one direction or another. And this is also a great way to analyze the back of the head and see how they're carrying themselves when they go up into extension. But Hank is unrestricted and demonstrating wonderful tummy time for his age and also has some thoughts to share with us. Okay, we're gonna roll back, ready? Here we go. Great job. Oh, it's okay, stay with me, stay with me. Good job, yes, talk it out. So I start at the bottom of the baby, and as we discussed during the slide deck, starting with the naviculars, I'm going to be at the feet and work my way up. Now, if you follow um, Fulford's techniques using the percussion hammer, he lists that these left lower extremity restrictions tend to present from birth. I examine the baby bilaterally and find what I find and treat what I treat. So he is without um, foot restrictions, but if there were a midfoot or a navicular restriction, I would apply BLT. Um, then I come and <laughs> as he's moving, check his tib fib for restriction and there aren't any. And then I'm going to, very similar to the way the pediatricians do the Barlows and the Ortolanis, I'm gonna check for the positioning of his femoral acetabular joint because based on um, intrauterine positioning as well as um, the route of birth delivery, kiddos can have uh, a hip that's riding anteriorly or posteriorly or that's restricted by those fascial connections, but he does not have any of that. This is also a time when I can assess the pelvis. So I'll come posteriorly and put my fingers on the SI joints and anteriorly, oh big yawn, yes. Anteriorly I can get on uh, each hemi pelvis. So because kiddos are so tiny, you can actually get pelvis and sacrum in the same, same moment. Um, and I'll begin by treating his SI joint, which is a bit restricted. Okay, okay, okay. Tell us about it. Here you go, bubbies, here you go. Good job, we're almost done, you're doing great. So treat his SI joint, and then from there, I'll come up and assess his abdomen, especially if the story is about um, lots of reflux, lots of colic, if this baby appears twisted, there's going to be fascial strains, there might be a, a diaphragm restriction. Linea alba is a great thing to treat here, very easy with fingertips using a myofascial release, and you can go right from linea alba to the sternum. Same technique, same handhold, and do a myofascial release for the sternum there. And then I apply my thumbs and examine that diaphragm. Bless you, oh my goodness. Did you get it out? Are you, oh big yawn, okay. All better? Okay, let me know if you need that. So then we'll go to the costal cage and slide in fairly, assess that diaphragm. And you can treat this here with a nice indirect release of the diaphragm. And while Hank is demonstrating that he has no pec restrictions because he has beautiful um, full extension, look at that, of those upper extremities, a lot of times, oh, 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 what is it? What is it? A lot of times one side or the other will be restricted and it's very easy to apply a myofascial release in that direction. Almost done, almost done, Bubba's. So then when I finish the lower half of the body, I've gotten up past the diaphragm. 
I will make a 180 degree turn. Hi! Can you say hi to all your adoring fans? Yeah? And okay, from here I'll start with um, upper ribs. Yes, would you like your passy? You're doing great. Oh, I know. Tell us about it. Yeah? There you go. Very good. Okay. So you can work on those upper ribs from here as well as getting those pecs. He does not um, have any restrictions there. But then I begin with head and neck. So I will cup the head and examine for condylar compression. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell parents that if the baby is really going to fuss, it's usually now. Not that this is a painful technique or that anything that we're doing is painful, but most kiddos don't like having their head restricted, restrained, being held. Oh, stretch it. Stretch it. I do my best to follow the babies wherever they're going and get what I can at that moment. And then we can always come back, right? Right? But this is a great time to engage with them, talk with them. I also keep baskets of toys in my office, and I always have medical students rotating with me. So sometimes somebody can play with you, and I can sneak in and do my work, right? Right? Good job. Good job. So start by relieving any condylar compression there. But this is also a wonderful opportunity if there is restriction at his occipital mastoid suture on either side to do a nice little V spread. If this is a baby that is experiencing a torticollis, this is a, a good time to do some myofascial release or BLT to those affected muscles. Yeah. How's that? And if this is a baby who is having issues with latching or breastfeeding, this is when I would apply a glove and begin the intraoral assessment, but we'll save that for another time. And at the end, once baby is completely free and released of their restrictions, I will do one final tummy time demonstration. Should we do one more tummy time? Yeah, you wanna show off your muscles? I'll do one more tummy time because a lot of times this shows you a great before and after. Can you look up? Can you look up, Hank? Say hi, good job. But this is a great way to show a before and after to the parents and the medical students, um, directly following treatment of what they looked like before and what they look like now. And then I do a summary of everything that happened and hand a nice, squishy, happy baby back to the parents.